everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video we're going to be checking out the super cool 3-0 exclusive Transformers Bumblebee Shattered Glass Soundwave with Ravage. There was no way on this planet was I going to pass this figure up. I was a huge fan of 3-0's original Bumblebee movie Soundwave and was actually a massive fan of their Shattered Glass Optimus Prime and this figure looks absolutely fantastic so I'm super excited to actually be able to show him off to you guys. However, unfortunately he is an exclusive meaning that he's going to be a lot harder to obtain when in comparison to some of the other 3-0 products. So for those of you looking to add this guy to your collection if an opportunity arises in the near future i would definitely recommend jumping on it sooner rather than later but before we actually take a look at the figure we'll very quickly go over the box art you can see here fantastic artwork of both soundwave and ravage you can see soundwave actually sporting the green bandana as we turn our attention here to the lower part of the box we've got shattered glass soundwave and ravage as well as this really cool green transformers text so without further ado let's crack this open and take a look at the actual figures themselves and so here we have soundwave shattered out of the packaging and the figure looks absolutely Absolutely incredible. This is by far the best repaint that 3-0 have ever put together. This guy honestly looks insane and it's all mainly down to the simple fact that the attention to detail on these pieces honestly just makes these pieces in a league of their own. They are so highly detailed and super well engineered and of course this paint scheme is completely different when in comparison to pretty much any of the other Soundwave figures currently out there on the market. Of course that slightly different design as well to the head really does help to defer from his previous incarnation but before we take a look at both Soundwave and Ravage we'll very quickly go through the accessories just as he comes with all of the same bells and whistles that we got with the original 3-0 Soundwave. So of course we do get included what appears to be an almost sniper rifle. Now of course we actually see him sport this in the Transformers Bumblebee movie and it looks exactly how it did on screen. You can see painted and sculpted impeccably well. Honestly the attention to detail is just remarkable and of course we've got this gunmetal silver as well as this wash applied over the top in order to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt and just to add to the overall realism. We also do get included a few accessories for Ravage but we'll touch base more with these later on in the review when we actually take a look at Ravage as for now I do have him stored away in the chest but you can see super nice attention to detail going on with these as well as impeccable paint apps and as per tradition with these DLX figures we get a plethora of different interchangeable hands so you can see here we've got a more expressive palm as well as a relaxed palm we of course also do get a command hand for of course when he's deploying Ravage to in fact attack the Autobots and then we also do get a pair of trigger holding hands of course to actually wield the gun and fresh out the packaging Soundwave of course includes a pair of fisted hands but actually turning our attention here to the main event himself honestly so such a remarkable job. I was actually quite skeptical to see how well done this repaint would actually turn out and honestly it's completely blown my expectations. It's just reminded me of how awesome this particular figure is and how awesome the recolor is. Honestly it's just super super impressive but as we bring him in here for a closer look of course the major design trait that this figure now sports is this separate bandana piece that applies over the top of his head. Honestly it really really does look pretty darn awesome. It is indeed a fabric piece and it also does have some bendy wire in it so these particular strands you can pose in whatever way you so desire in order to really get him into some of those super dynamic realistic poses much like we've seen from some of the promo images I will however state that it is incredibly difficult to actually place it over the crest so definitely be careful of these ear sections or the antennas here at the top when actually applying this but if you do take your time of course you'll be able to place it over and push it down in order to create a very very awesome look for the character but actually turning to the attention to detail you can see the faceplate just looks remarkable multi-layered panels which I'm always a huge fan of of course we've now got the green visor instead of the red that we got on the original version and you you can see the sculpt work just continues all the way throughout the helmet even turning our attention here to the back you can see all of this gunmetal silver detailing which just looks impeccable as we flip here to the actual concussion blaster that Soundwave sports on the shoulder this too has also been sculpted and painted impeccably well you can see of course we now have a much more dominant white color scheme when in comparison to the blue on the original figure but the detail is definitely not lost at all you can see a really nice wash applied over the top in order to make this look weathered of course we've got some gunmetal highlights there and we also still do have that same die cast rod that pegs into the gun and of course into the back which too has also been sculpted super super nicely and whilst we're actually here at the back we can turn our attention to some of the details so we've got this blue component here really nice looking details as well as paint going on as well as once again that super super nice wash 3-0 are just renowned for honestly their paintwork is some of the best I've ever seen on a premium collectibles you can see as we turn our attention here to the back of Soundwave's arms just as if not as detailed as the front honestly these have turned out super super nicely and the die cast endoskeleton not only adds a great sense of weight to this guy but also reinforces forces some of those joints and honestly actually looks incredibly realistic so you can see here the reflective tint that we've got going on here for this particular elbow region but you can see there the spinal structure which when we actually get down to articulation honestly only gets better and then as we just flip here once again to the front of Soundwave we've now got a metallic blue used here for the cassette deck which I think looks really really cool you can in fact actually see Ravage peeking through this which is really really awesome of course the Decepticon insignia slap bang there in the center and all the way throughout the figure this really nice dirty and grimy wash applied over the top just to make this 
this guy really look battered and worn. Of course, metallic forearms here, which look fantastic. Really nice looking detail. You can see the wash they've applied to the fists themselves also looks super, super nice. And considering this guy took heavy influence from his G1 appearance, we've got some of those cassette player traits, such as the buttons here, which I think have turned out really, really nicely. You can see all painted as well as sculpted impeccably well. As we take a look here towards the thighs, very thick, as you would expect from this particular incarnation of Soundwave, albeit sculpted and painted impeccably well. You can see some of that really nice detailing on the interior section of Soundwave's legs. Super, super awesome mechanical detailing, even these tiny little vents here on the underside. And then as we just take a look towards the shins, incredibly heavily armored, as well as once again painted and sculpted beautifully. Even here towards the back, you can see some of that amazing hydraulic as well as interior mechanical detailing. Overall, just a flawless looking figure from every single angle. This guy has turned out so, so nicely. I literally cannot fault him at all, but it only gets better. Turning to Soundwave's articulation, the head is on a ball joint and then we also get a ball joint at the neck. So if we utilize both of them, that does allow the head to look up to that far, which is absolutely fantastic. As well as, of course, down to a really, really good degree. So you can have him looking upon some of these Autobot victims. Victims. We can also tilt it here side to side. This can also look left to right. The concussion blaster can hinge up and down as well as swivel in order to get out of the way. Here for the shoulders, these can hinge out to the sides in order to allow for a fantastic range of motion out here at the shoulder. And then if you also utilize the butterfly joint, that does allow you to really, really excel that range of motion. We also do get a butterfly joint coming forwards. And when you actually utilize this, if I just turn our attention here to the side, you can see that it once again reveals some impeccable looking skull work, all of which has been detailed and painted super super nicely we also do get a rotation here at the bicep which can rotate the full 360 double joints here at the elbows once again reinforced by die cast which can bend way past 90 double ball pegs here at the wrists allowing for a fantastic range of motion and then as we just take a look here towards the torso my personal favorite area of this guy this can crunch all the way forward which is just so so awesome so you can see a great crunch and if i just compress this to show you how that looks from the back you can see that as we begin to crunch this these multi-layered panels begin to expand which reveals some incredible spinal as well as interior detailing honestly such a well-engineered figure and looks really really impressive from pretty much every single angle as i keep mentioning in this video this also allows him to rock side to side if you do take these sections you can indeed actually extend these they are on hinge joints and then these pieces are also on ball joints just to allow them to get out of the way when you're utilizing the waist joint as well as the hips we can also rotate this here left to right slightly it could probably do the full 360 however you will literally have to pull all of these panels out in order to actually get to that so i shan't be doing that here for this review but the five panel here can in fact hinge out of the way allowing him to do the splits to a pretty considerable degree much like some of their other products we do in fact get a die cast drop down hip joint allowing the leg to come all the way forward which once again is just fantastic so you can definitely get this guy in some ninja poses and then he can also kick to the back these panels also have the capability of extending hinging out of the way in order to allow for that range of motion which is just fantastic we also do get a rotation here at the thigh a double joint here at the knee once again reinforced by die cast and when you do actually utilize that the thigh pad acts almost like hydraulics it does in fact actually shift with that which also reveals some really really nice internal skull work just such a fantastic piece and then as we turn our attention to the foot this can pivot forwards as well as backwards rock side to side swivel left to right and we also do in fact actually get a hinge joint here at the toe so in regards to articulation just as good as the detail in my opinion this figure is literally all round a 10 out of 10 i literally have no flaws with him at all i think he's turned out so much better than i could have ever possibly imagined and of course here with this new shattered glass paint scheme it really has just given this mold an entire new lease of life he really does look fantastic now before we actually finish off with soundwave and take a look at ravage there is one thing also worth mentioning is that if you come here to the head and actually pull the cap off i shan't be doing that as it does actually take quite a lot of manipulating to get the bandana back on you can insert two ag13 batteries which are sadly not included and then if you push the crest that will indeed allow the eyes to illuminate a really piercing green so that too is also a super super nice touch but overall for soundwave literally as mentioned before 10 out of 10 this guy is absolutely fantastic but it only gets better we've of course still got ravage to look at so in order to deploy him ravage eject <laughs> You could, of course, drop the cassette deck down and then just shoot Ravage here out the torso. Of course, this is him almost in his cassette tape mode. And that also does reveal some really nice internal detailing here of Soundwave, which is just something that they didn't have to include. But I'm super, super glad that they did. But really, really awesome here with Soundwave. So we'll pop him off to the side and, of course, take a look at his minion Ravage. Now, Ravage is actually incredibly interesting for a couple of reasons. This is, in fact, one of the first almost transformable figures that 3-0 have ever put together. And considering how small this guy is and how 
how compact he becomes. Honestly, I really wish that they were able to create a fully transformable figure as I think it would be fantastic. But you can see here in his Cybertronian cassette tape alt mode, he looks exactly how he did on the film just before Soundwave does command him to attack Optimus Prime. I think the attention to detail is pretty decent and the actual shape that they've managed to pull off I also think looks excellent. But as mentioned, he does transform. So in order to do this, you simply just have to detach this slot there from this tab. Of course, repeat the same process. That will then also detach this tab here from this slot so we can just hinge these sections up we can then take these pull these here out to the sides take the tail and in fact detach this wriggle this to the back and wriggle this almost butt panel out as well then we can just shift this here all the way we can then turn our attention to ravage's head pull this section up these tiny panels do in fact hinge out to the sides so repeat the same process here bring this all the way forwards just so that it does conceal those gaps we can then fold the legs around actually extend these on all four legs so just pull that section out and this in fact has also been painted and sculpted really really nicely of course come here to this side and repeat the same process so just take this and shift this section forwards come here to this leg and of course repeat the same process and then finally repeat the same process here for this side and I do believe that is Ravage fully transformed up into his robot form looking really really awesome i'll be sure to position him in a much more natural pose in just a second after we've tidied up the transformation but we can also bring in some of those accessories that we saw earlier on so we can take here the hit missiles and these simply do just peg into the side of the thighs so you can see that looks really really cool spin our attention here to the side and snap that one in just like so and then finally we also do get what appears to be an almost missile rack and this also does peg here into the top and that is Ravage fully transformed up looking absolutely fantastic. Now Ravage like Soundwave is just awesome honestly there's not much more I can say this figure looks absolutely incredible I actually remember in my original 3-0 Soundwave review which I believe I did over a year ago now I actually said that I would have picked Ravage up on his own because he was that well done honestly they've done such a fantastic job you can see the amount of detail they've packed into this accessory itself is just remarkable the head sculpt looks incredible you can see there the really really awesome orange eyes of course we've got some super nice metallic blue highlights scattered all the way throughout the figure these really really jagged looking teeth as well going on for the front and you can also see some fantastic mechanical components on the underside of Ravage the legs completely decked out with so much detail Decepticon insignia is there on the side you can see that dry brushing effect going on here for the top of the shoulders really really awesome intricate mechanical detailing going along the side the entire spinal piece too picked out in silver you can see that really nice darker wash that we've got applied over the top of the blue and this actual section which I believe is a missile rack is completely picked out in gunmetal and it just looks so so nice honestly the attention to detail on this piece is just super super awesome awesome metallic blue highlights going on here for the lower section you can see that reflective tin which you would actually be forgiven for mistaking this for die cast when in actual fact this entire figure is plastic they've done such a remarkable job you can see as we turn our attention here to the side where these missiles are concerned this looks super cool the only weak area of this figure in my opinion is the tail i don't think it looks the best but that's mainly just down to how thin it had to be for him to actually transform but other than that a fantastic looking piece articulation is just as good we get a hinge joint here at the head as well as for the neck and opening and closing jaw which is actually incredibly stiff but you can see we've got ball joints here going on for the shoulders hinge joints going on here for these sections as well as hinge joints at the feet the same can also be said here for these hind legs we get hinge joints here as well as a hinge joint at the foot as well as an actual hinge joint here for the tip of the tail so overall ravage is just as good as soundwave in my opinion and this figure if anything is just an amazing sign of how well done an actual transformable version from 3-0 would be as i really think if they were to do the likes of a 3-0 transforming optimus prime on Honestly, it would probably be mind-blowing. And for a 3-0 Ravage comparison, of course, we've got the new Shattered Glass version on the left, as well as the Transformers Bumblebee movie-inspired version on the right. And you can see that despite them being the exact same sculpt, the stark difference in colour truly does make all the difference. They really do look like completely different figures. And it's once again just a prime example of how well done this particular repaint has turned out. Turning to some comparisons, here we've got the new Shattered Glass Soundwave compared next to the previously released Transformers Bumblebee-inspired Soundwave. And you can see that despite them being the exact same sculpt, the stark difference in colour as well as the addition of the new bandana truly does set an entire different presence for this new shattered glass sound wave two fantastic figures and if you were to ask me which one do I actually prefer honestly it would be a toss up between the both of them as I think they are equally just as good as one another I'm almost slightly tilting towards the shattered glass version just as it's a little more unique in terms of design as well as colour scheme but honestly both super super cool figures and here is shattered glass sound wave compared next to the recently released shattered glass version of Optimus Prime so some final thoughts for the 3-0 
Transformers, Bumblebee, Shattered Glass, Soundwave, and Ravage. Overall, what can I say that I haven't already said so many times throughout this review? This figure is absolutely insane. The attention to detail, as well as the actual engineering to some of the joints, is just remarkable. He's such a well-engineered piece and looks fantastic from every single angle. And no matter what pose you actually get this guy in, every single crevice is completely detailed as well as completely painted. Honestly, it's just such a beautiful figure. 100% 10 out of 10. Just really, really remarkable. This time, of course, done in the shattered glass paint scheme. I actually think it looks just as good as the original version, if not in some areas, actually better, especially where that cassette deck is concerned. I think the metallic blue that they've used for the transparent plastic really does look remarkable. And I actually love the touch of the bandana that you apply to the head. It really does create for a really drastic different look, considering that at the end of the day, it's really just a minor difference. I think that in regards to the Ravage figure as well, that figure is super, super awesome. Amazing amount of detail and the fact that it can actually transform into that Cybertronian cassette tape and then transform into the actual robot form, once again, is just mind blowing and both modes look just as good as they did on screen. I think he comes with a great array of accessories such as of course the blaster, the concussion cannon that you can attach onto the shoulder as well as an entire array of different hands. And not to mention that he also comes with the standard DLX Transformers display base which as per tradition with these reviews I have decided to leave in the packaging just as it's a very large base and I actually don't have no room to display it within the collection. So for those of you who are a fan of 3-0 products this guy is another home run, honestly a smashing figure, one of their best DLX releases to date. If you like the original Soundwave release then you're absolutely going to love this especially if you're a fan of the Shattered Glass continuity and it's quite an obscure character as well. I don't actually think we've gotten a Shattered Glass version of Soundwave for quite a considerable amount of time and sadly Hasbro haven't put anything out for Soundwave in the most recent Shattered Glass line that's been exclusive to Hasbro Pulse so I'm really hoping that we can actually get some form of mainline version of Shattered Glass Soundwave but for now this is definitely the best version of this character that I own in my collection and I think he's awesome. The only downside is that he wasn't exclusive meaning that he was made in incredibly limited quantities so for those of you who do get the opportunity to pick him up for close to retail I would definitely recommend jumping on it sooner rather than later as there is no doubt this guy is going to go for astronomical prices on the aftermarket. I would love to know down in the comment section below on what you guys thought of both the review as well as the figure. Do you guys rate this guy as highly as I do and will you be tracking him down or is he indeed an easy pass? I thank you all for watching and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.